All right, so we're back with this guy. I'm gonna do the drum brakes on the rear. We got our AutoZone special here. Drums, shoes, hardware, wheel cylinders. Now we have to do this side first because the other side is completely disintegrated, which means I don't know what order things are supposed to go in because parts fell out. So we're gonna pull the wheel off after I jack this thing up and then figure out how everything's supposed to go, pull it off, put it on, and then duplicate the driver's side. Okay, so front wheel's chalked because we're gonna be jacking this thing up pretty high, this side and the other side. And we're gonna have to bleed the brakes once we bust the wheel cylinder off, which means you have to do this side first because you start in order of operation from furthest to closest of the master cylinder. So this is the furthest. So we have to bleed this first when well, we're changing this one first, so not a big deal. Boom, then the other side we'll have to do that and then bleed that side. And then if I really feel like it, I'll consider doing that side and then the other front. Just so this is completely bled and I don't have to mess with this thing for hopefully the foreseeable future. Because I hate this car and I will be so excited the day somebody finally totals this thing out. Alright, so looks like we got a shoe here, shoe there, right? Obvious wheel cylinders there. And then in here we have a long spring that goes between this shoe and this shoe. Followed by a little twisty turny thing, which is going to be our self-adjuster, I reckon. We have this clip guy that's attached to a spring that goes from the clip down to this hole in the shoe. We have another spring underneath, if I can get in there and focus. So the spring runs here. We got a uh, another bracket it looks like. That goes over and fits in here. Spring goes on the other side, so it runs through this little thing up in here. Where this bracket is, I guess that holds the spring. Then we got this clip that's holding in this thingy, which should be for the parking brake or emergency brake, whatever you're going to call it. And then that springy thing that should also be attached. The parking brake kind of goes around through here, comes in from this side which is the parking brake cable so spray this one's a brake clean clean i know these aren't technical terms here but uh you know we're just giving you an idea of what it looks like on the inside and how everything's going to need to go back once we take it all out so back once we brake parts clean this thing and kind of clean it up a little make it easier to see all right so we brake parts cleaned this a little bit didn't clean up all that well but we can kind of see still a little bit in here at least I guess you guys can. I don't know. With the, the sun being bright and then it being dark in here. I don't know. I'll take some pictures, I guess, and I'll splice them in here so we can get a better idea of how everything's going to end up going back. And all this, all that brake parts clean kind of did was for sure made my driveway dirty until uh, it rains again on it. But there we go. That's what we're looking at. So, before I start taking everything apart, since we have to do the wheel cylinder, I'm going to go around to this side where she's going to bolt in. I don't know how well you guys can see. It's dark in here. Maybe I'll try with some light. Hold up. Um, but before we flare wrench that, we're going to liquid wrench spray that and get it kind of penetrating in there so it'll be, we don't strip anything. Try to take the brake line off the wheel cylinder. All right, so went ahead and liquid wrenched this. We can see I did the uh, bleeder valve and the uh, brake line here. So we'll let that soak. Uh, by the time we're ready to crack that open, take the wheel cylinder off, we'll just blast it again for good measure. So we're going to let it soak, blast again a little bit, and then we shouldn't have any problem taking that off. And I'll let you know what size that is once we get there. But first things first, we're going to disassemble and then put her back together. All right, we got it partially broken down so far. That's how the big spring went. It looks like it's pretty symmetrical, so I don't think it matters which side goes into which part of the, uh, the shoe here. 
so that's good and I did get the big clip on this side off you have to rotate this about uh, 90 degrees and then you can pop it through there that's I guess what holds the shoes this little clip here it's got some tension on it so as I'm taking everything off here I'm putting it down here where it was so I'll be able to easily put it back on so we still need to bust this guy loose rotate 90 degrees that'll pop off Let's see if I can demonstrate that for you one hand I didn't bring the tripod out today but you want to kind of push in here twist like so and then I'll pop loose like that yeah so you're not too bad so now we just need to get this bottom spring guy out of there you can see that'll let us get the parking brake off pull the shoes off get the adjuster automatic adjuster dealio off and we'll be able to grab that wheel cylinder and bust him loose all right so we got the everything's disconnected now Parking brake thing. I'll have to see if this is a replacement part or not in the hardware kit. But so how you get the parking brake deal off of this guy is I just kind of wiggle to get back and forth. I figured there'd be a clip or something holding this in, like a little C clip, but there's not. So I just kind of worked it back and forth, back and forth while pulling, and then popped right off. So all right, we'll spray some more brake clean. Get this all clean because I can see where we got some contact points where the back of the shoe is going to be rubbing up against this inner part of the drum so that needs to get cleaned so it moves nice and freely because honestly this side I probably could have just left it but I really needed to see how everything was put together here because these shoes they have quite a bit of meat on them I mean they really other than being rusty looking they don't look like they have any less material see but whatever, this job isn't too bad so far. Now we gotta do, so we're gonna clean this off. Boom, get the wheel cylinder off, and then reverse order, wheel cylinder, parking brake, bottom spring, blah, 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 blah. So be back. All right, so everything's cleaned up as much as it can be anywhere, as much as I'm going to. So we'll put some of that brake anti-seize stuff, brake lube on those three contact points, and clean this up a little. It looks like there's a little groove right there with a parking brake thing. So it's probably supposed to be a C-clip. This one doesn't have it. And I don't see a replacement one in there. Maybe there is. Maybe it'll look harder. But anyway. And then as for the uh, flare nut size, it's going to be a 10 millimeter. Unfortunately, my sizes go from 9 to 11. So much as I don't want to, I'm going to have to get a 10 millimeter regular wrench, and hopefully I liquid wrench the fitting enough that it's going to easily come out and I don't strip anything. So, I'll let you know how that goes. Alright, got the new wheel cylinder on. Here's some tips and tricks for this dude. Um, the, th the little bolts that go through on the back that hold this thing into place are both 8 millimeters. So on the old one, you'll see as this thing sits in here, the bleeder valve's on top, and the, uh, the brake hose goes in through the bottom there, the fitting. Uh, the bleeder valve's also 8 millimeter, at least it is on the new one, and as I said, 10 millimeter on the uh, fitting. So since I didn't have flare, what I did was I took two 10s, this 10 and another 10, and I held them next to each other right like up against each other that way I could get maximum grip with what I had to go and then I loosen the fitting that way so if you don't have the 10 flare just take two regular 10s and put one there one there just right up against each other so you can maximize your grip and pink bust it loose with enough uh would you lube her up and then for this dude I also recommend when you go you can do it when you're loosening but definitely when you're tightening you're going to want to take a big pair of like these guys 
grip this with your one hand and then when you're going to tighten back you can use 110 just to tighten it you don't need to use them both and then tighten her back while holding that otherwise this is going to twist and you don't want those see this one's even got an ever so slight twist to it but it was a little more gnarly uh, before I decided to grip and hold right here on this metal spot and then tighten it down so we'll uh, start putting her back together then all right so I'm actually on the other side of the car now and here's what we got going on wheel bearing needs replacement it appears that when uh, these dudes did this job last time and clamped this hose when they uh, burned up these so-called shoes probably generated enough heat and melted all the grease in this bearing and fried it and that's why we got that sandpapery gritty noise so I've already cleaned all this stuff off don't know if that was a firework or gunshot somebody might be dead not my problem though now these contact points we're gonna lube those up I'm waiting for the wife to return with a new wheel bearing and this is relatively easy to get off. So what you do is uh, pop the dust cover off with screwdrivers and such. This is a 30 millimeter nut. I confirmed it with my little Harbor Freight uh, digital caliper. 30 mil, so she's gotta get me a 30 mil socket because I have, the BMW takes 36 mil. And then the highest impact I have only goes up to like 22 or something, I think, 24, 26. I don't know. Whatever it is, I, I don't have anything in between it. So we need a 30. I uh, already got the new wheel cylinder on this side. And I went ahead and put the two uh, eights on, holding it in. The bleeder's an eight, and then the, uh, you know, the, the flare thing, the 10, did the same thing to get this side off. Put it back on, so now this hose isn't twisted on this side like it was on the other side. Well, well, like this was earlier and the other side was. Whoever did it did a botched job. So I grabbed the, uh, the old turbo pliers, clamped that spot right there, torqued it down. So that's all good. And I did figure out that since this side actually had some of the parts but missing chunks more, uh, what how this goes is this little parking brake bracket between that and the shoe here is where this, there's going to be a little washer and then the C-clip goes in here to hold that in. So that's how you do that. And once she gets the other parts here, we'll go ahead and impact this off and uh, torque the new one on. And the torque on the new one is, let's see, uh, 100 and something. Where am I looking at? Uh, rear hub retaining the 160 foot pounds. So 160 foot pounds. I don't know if my torque wrench goes that high, does it? Goes up to 150. So we'll have to go 150 and then just bump it a little to get our 160, I guess. So that'll be when we put the nut back on. I doubt her thing is going to come with a nut, and it's not my car, so we're just going to reuse it. So, once she gets back from work and the parts run, we can get this hub off. And then actually what we're going to do is pull the hub off, put the brakes back on with the hub out of the way so it's easier to do. And I'll show you exactly what everything looks like behind the scenes without this hub on. And then you'll know how the brakes are before and how they should go if you're not the original owner and they're fucked up like mine. And then we'll put the hub on. So this is maybe a slight blessing in disguise that this will be out of the way when we put all these brakes back together. So be back probably much later and much darker, but we'll be here together. All right, this is what it looks like fully assembled. There's a spring that goes from this shoe under this deal, over into here. We have this spring going from here up into the uh, self-adjuster arm. Here's the self-adjuster. This side towards the front of the car. It's got a littler kind of hook deal. This side has got kind of a bigger hook deal. Which goes towards the back of the car. Spring, large one, goes from this side. And there you go. That's how it'll look when it's proper. 
So now we're going to put the wheel hub back on, torque to 160 with the big nut, and then put the drum on and check for adjustment bleed brakes since we've replaced the wheel cylinder. Alright, new wheel hub's on, just slides right on. Nice and quiet. It's cheap auto zone, so it'll probably last like three months. But we'll see. Alright, so it's uh, 150 and some change. May need to be broken in. Not the smoothest spinning wheel bearing, but at the very least. It's quiet. It was a one year warranty, so we'll see. Alright, put the drum on. Hit the brakes. That's literally as hard as you can press them. That's better. Okay, so now we can see the brakes do work. Now we can bleed them. All right, for brake bleeding, I've got this little adapter piece of hose on a piece of hose which goes to this reservoir with a piece of hose which goes to this guy. So we're going to pull the little rubber dude off the fitting. We're going to attach this guy to the fitting. Then we're going to use our 8 millimeter wrench to... Open the bleeder valve once my assistant gets in there and presses the pedal firmly to the floor. Press the pedal to the floor. All right, pump five times and on the fifth one, press it to the floor. All right, so we had some technical issues. However, as you can see, we have a new drum in there. Maybe you can't see. Maybe now you can see. Shiny, new drum, new strut. So we finished bleeding the brakes. We did them in order of this wheel, that wheel. Uh, eight millimeter, remember, on the bleeder and then my little device I use so as you have the person pump the brakes and then press and hold while the bleeder valve's closed then you'll crack it open and then the pedal will sink to the floor and they're going to push all that fluid into that little reservoir and you're going to suck whatever's in between the hose whatever's in the hose that is between the bleeder valve and the uh that little reservoir on my sucky deal then while the pedal's still pressed to the floor close the bleeder valve Pedal will go up, have them press it a few more times until it gets firm again. About five times will do rinse and repeat. While the press and hold and open the bleeder valve. Do that until the, I did that until the fluid came out nice and clean from the reservoir. Make sure the reservoir is topped off so you don't suck a bunch of air. So I did it to this wheel because it's the furthest. Then that one's the next furthest. I was going to do it on the fronts, and that is an 11 millimeter on the bleeder valve for the fronts. So the 11 millimeter flare did fit. However, those things were so seized on there. Whoever bled these brakes last time torqued the bleeder valves down too much. And even with the liquid wrench, I couldn't bust them loose without risking stripping the bleeder valves. So we got everything that was in the reservoir out and then everything that was in these rear two brake lines. So that's a majority of the fluid. That's good enough. And now this thing will be going on a test drive later. And... We'll be done with it for a little bit. The only other thing we have to do on this is the radiator. So we're done with brakes and struts and any other suspension related problems for uh, the foreseeable future. So thanks for watching, guys. Peace.